Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're gonna to talk about finding the perimeter of quadrilaterals. And two of those words might be confusing to you. Perimeter, right? Because we haven't learned about it yet. And in case you don't remember, quadrilaterals are just shapes that have four straight sides. So our learning goal for today says, I can decompose quadrilaterals to understand perimeter. So our materials that you'll need for today's lesson are paper, because you're gonna to need to cut out a two inch square, string, a ruler, tape, scissors, markers, or crayons or colored pencils, and your problem set. So are you ready for some good news about this lesson in this video today? Are you sure? Okay, so some good news is you're gonna complete problem number one, which is half of your problem set in this video. So you're gonna leave with this video done with oh, like half of your problem set done. Sounds pretty cool, right? Yeah, I think so. All right, so make sure that you have those materials. Now, if you don't have string, that's okay. See if you can find something that you can use um, to measure around something, maybe a shoelace, maybe a necklace, something along those lines, okay? Um, also, if you don't have tape, that's okay too. You'll be able to figure that out, don't worry. Okay, just make sure that um, you can at least follow along with us as we're going through the lesson. Okay, so here we go. So you're gonna take your piece of paper and draw a two inch square. Make sure to use your ruler so you don't wanna just guess. You're grabbing your ruler and you're measuring a two inch square. So that means all sides need to be two inches. Once you're done measuring, cut out your square and then you have your two inch square. So pause the video, get your new square going and then click play once you have it cut out. All right, friends, so now we're gonna work on problem 1A. You're gonna trace the square with a red marker or color pencil, crayon, anything that you have. Red is really the best color, but if you don't have red, that's okay. Okay, so you're gonna trace around the outside just like I am here in black. So pause the video, trace your square in 1A, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, so now we're gonna use your string to measure around the outside of your square. Then you're gonna cut the string so it's the length of your square. So here, take your string. Then you're gonna use your ruler to measure the length of your string. But don't worry, friends, if you're like, what is she talking about? I'm gonna show you how to do it. So here we go, let me show you. All right, so here I have my two by two inch square and I have my piece of string, okay? Now what we wanna do with this is, remember we're trying to measure around the outside of our square. So to do that, you can't just kind of say, oh, you know, that's around the outside of my square. Now, we have to be more specific than that. So as, or more precise than that. So as you're doing this, you want to be finding the very end of your square, holding it down, coming to the other corner, holding it down. Okay, Coming to this corner, holding it down. Go to the other side, hold it down, and then go back up to the top. Then once you get to the top right there, you wanna come in with a pair of scissors and you wanna snip right there. So now I have the length of the outside of my square. You also wanna measure this. So make sure that you grab your ruler that you have here and you make sure that you start all the way at the very, um, at zero on your ruler. Because notice here, if you guys can look in kind of close, my ruler does not start at the end for zero. It starts in just a little teeny tiny bit. So I have to make sure that I'm lining up my string at the very end there. And if I look, let me slide this over so you guys can see, the length of my string is eight inches. Okay, so I want you guys to pause the video and I want you to use your string to measure around the outside of your square. Then you're gonna cut the string so it's the length of your square and then use your ruler to measure the length of the string. Then go ahead and pause the video and then click play when you're ready to go for the, over for the next step. All right, friends, so make sure, pause if you need more time to measure your string. What's the length of your string? Yeah, it's eight inches. Oh, you know what, friends? That's what mine was when I measured. OMG, how do we have, like we're not even together. 
How do we have string that measures the same length? How is that even possible? What do you think? Yeah, it's the same because we both started off with a two inch square. So we're gonna have the same outside boundary because it's the same size shape. All right, so now we're gonna look at 1B. So we're gonna draw a path from the top right-hand corner of the square to the bottom right-hand corner. Your line should not be straight though, okay? So check out how I do it. All right, so let's model how to do this next step. Okay, so from the top right-hand corner of your square to the bottom right-hand corner, we're gonna draw a line. We're gonna be creative and we're gonna draw the path so we don't want it to be straight. So you want it to have like a nice curve to it. Okay, now everybody's can look different, that's fine. But notice how I went from the top, curved all the way down and I got to the bottom right, okay? So the next step that you wanna do is you wanna cut this out real quick. So we're just gonna do a quick cut. Stay with your line so it's nice and curvy. And then there you have it, okay? So as I have this new part of my shape, when I trace my finger around the outside, that's uh, called the perimeter of a shape. It's the outside. Um, so I like to think of perimeter as if you think of you have a fenced in yard, your fence goes around the outside of your property. So it's like the perimeter it kind of keeps everything in where you're allowed to run around and play inside your fence. So your fence is, goes on the perimeter of your property or of your yard. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is you're gonna do that next step. Then after you do that, you're gonna slide this. So look friends, I'm just taking this piece that was right here. Okay, I'm gonna flip this so our lines don't get confusing. You're gonna take this and you're gonna slide it whoop, and bring it right over here, okay? Then you are going to tape that. If you don't have tape, you don't have to tape it, it's fine. Uh, you're just gonna take this and you're gonna trace this new shape that we made uh, in 1B on your problem set, okay? So when you're tracing though, you don't wanna have any spaces there. You wanna have them tucked up nice and neat together, okay? And it'll match up just perfectly. So again, if you talk about the perimeter, which is the outside boundary, you would trace your finger around here. Whoop, gotta go over my finger so I hold it straight. Okay, that's called the perimeter. So as you build your new shape, I want you to trace your finger around that as well and say the word perimeter to yourself. So go ahead and pause the video, draw your line from the right top to the bottom right. You're gonna cut it out and you're gonna slide the straight sides over next to each other so you're making a new shape and tracing it in 1B. Okay, so pause the video, do that, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. So what happened to the perimeter of the new shape you cut out? Think about the sides and the, the, um, the edges. What happened to that, to that perimeter? So pause the video, think about it, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, so what happened? Here's some of the things that I came up with. It got curvy instead of straight, right? So when we first started, all the sides were straight, and now, woo, they got some curve to them. And the two sides change, and the top and the bottom stayed the same. And we made a new perimeter because the shape changed. So those are just some of the things that I came up with. Did you guys come up with any of those too? Okay, awesome. All right, so now you're gonna use your string to measure around the outside of your new shape. Cut the string so it's the length of your shape. And then use your ruler to measure the length of your string. So the same thing that we just did with our square the first time to measure the perimeter around the outside, you're gonna do the same thing but this time you're measuring your new shape and make sure that when you're getting that string, you're going around all of those curves. You gotta tuck in all around the curves to get that new perimeter. So pause the video, measure the perimeter of your new shape, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, look at problem 1C. Which shape has a greater perimeter? Our square? or the new shape, and how do you know? So pause the video, think about that, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All 
All right, friends, pause if you need more time. So which shape has a greater perimeter? Yeah, the new shape does, right? Because we added in those curves. So that means that our string, we needed more string to go in on those curves. And then when we got to the other side, when we moved that shape around, we had to go around those new curves as well. So the new shape definitely has a greater perim perimeter. All right, let's look at 1D now. So you're gonna color the inside of shapes, the shapes in problem 1A and 1B with a blue crayon. So pause the video. You don't have to write anything on 1D, you're just coloring in the shapes in 1A and 1B with a blue crayon. So pause the video, do that, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, so that's 1D. Now we're gonna look at 1E. So which color represents the perimeters of the shapes and how do you know? So remember, the perimeter is the outside part, right? So which color represents the perimeter? The red or the blue? Yeah, it's the red. The red represents the perimeter because the perimeter is the part around the shape. All right, so 1F, what does the other color represent? And how do you know? So pause the video, think about what does that other color, blue, represent, and how do you know? And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here we go. All right, so what does that blue color represent? The blue represents the area of the shape. The area is the space the shape takes up. It's the inside. So think about it like this, friends. Again, remember, think about your yard. You might have a fence around your yard. Okay, so the fence goes all along your perimeter, the outside. And the area is the place inside your fence where you can run around and play. All right, let's look at 1G. Which shape has a greater area? How do you know? So pause the video, look at your two shapes. Which one has a greater area? The square or the new shape? And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here we go. So you ready? They have the same area because both squares were made from the two inch square. So we started with a two inch square and then all we did was cut that two inch square to make our new shape. So our area did not change. So you can have a different perimeter, but your area can still be the same, just like the example that we did in this lesson. Okay, so awesome job with that one. All right, sweet. You guys did a great job exploring perimeter by decomposing quadrilaterals. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.